Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, a show that's for and about people who live in Reading. Recently, John Fudo, who was formerly the head of the Recreation Department here in Reading, stopped by to talk about what's been going on in that department. But before we get to that, we have Erica McNamara, who is the head of the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. We want to hear what she has to say. Let's listen in now. Well, hello and welcome. I'm here today with Erica McNamara. She is the uh, director of the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. It's great to have you here today, Erica. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. And good that, to see you. Good to see you also. That uh, organization is kind of a mouthful. It the is. The Reading <laughs> um, Coalition Against Substance Abuse. Exactly what is that? Well, we go by our CASA because it is a mouthful. Right. <laughs> and we're a community coalition that was founded um, back in 2006 by our um, town leaders, uh, police departments, school leaders, and a lot of local citizens who were concerned about the increase at the time in opioid abuse and okay. overdoses. So since that time, we've um, developed into an organization with uh, three staff and a lot of different programs and events happening. And as a coalition, we try to focus on involving all of the segments of the community in looking at a community strategy focused on substance abuse prevention. And um, you know, where does the funding come from? Is, that a, is it run, run by the town, or wh where does that come from? So right now, we have three federal grants um, mm -hmm. through the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, um, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And under that, we have two uh, special grants, one on preventing underage drinking and one on focusing on mental health awareness. Okay, excellent. So it's pretty much grant funded. It's pretty much grant funded. We do receive a lot of in-kind support through the town. Sure. Okay. Um, about half of our federal grant is matched by town uh, support services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So things like our office space and sure. supervision administration sure. and that we couldn't live without. So it's a Photocopies. really valuable <laughs> yes, the use of all the, the, the things sure. you need to do sure. to get the support done. services and yeah. stuff are provided yeah. by the town. So that's the, really helpful. But the primary funding comes from these grants. Comes from the grants yes. So what is the basic mission then of, of the Reading Coalition or ARCASA? Sure. Well, it's a two pronged mission. Uh, the first part of the mission focuses on community collaboration. Our goal is to bring all of our community partners together in one room on a monthly basis. We okay. have a 24 member board which represents 12 sectors of the community. So that first part of the mission focuses on the collaboration. The second piece is to reduce substance abuse. That was why we were right. founded. That's right. what we hope to achieve. So we focus under the substance abuse category on creating initiatives, policy, uh, prevention projects that focus on that prevention piece. Mm -hmm. So when you say there are 24 different members of the board, mm -hmm. Who are they? Is it sure. just random people from the community or are they specific people? Um, well, actually, um, the founders of our CASA were very specific about who they wanted to be on the board. They wanted okay. to make sure there would always be a liaison to each major part of the town. So our town manager, our police chief, our su superintendent of schools, our principals. Um, we also have um, liaison through the YMCA, mm -hmm. through our clergy council, um, our um, recreation department, board of health. Mm -hmm. All of the different aspects that make our community run. We also have parent representatives and youth representatives, okay. business, um, as well as the Rotary Club. Okay. So we really try to capture um, all of the different elements sure. where they can reach out further into their groups and bring information back. Law forward. enforcement representation. Law enforcement, yeah. um, well represented through our school resource officer, our chief of police, as well as a lieutenant, a body who is in charge of our detectives division. Right. Okay. So it seems like a really a broad swath of the community. Definitely. There. Yeah. So so what types of activities do you do in regards to uh, substance abuse prevention sure. in town? Um, well, a lot of what we focused on um, in our first five years of our programming was on creating better policies around substance abuse okay. prevention and also trying to help young people who might be abusing substances mm -hmm. find the resources and support they need to either discontinue their use or to reduce the consequences as a result of it. So for example, mm -hmm. some young people might get in trouble as a result of it right. and we didn't want them to have to go through the entire court process. So we developed a new program called the Reading Police Diversion Program and Chemical Health Program where they're able to go through a diversion program that um, happens before a complaint is fully filed. So okay. that means they can complete a series of conditions and not have it be on their record for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So we try to hold them accountable, but also provide the support and the education they need to learn from what it is that's going on sure. and connect to some more services. Sure. So that's sure. just one example. We also have changed policies at the school level, alcohol policies at the town level. Um, we tried to enhance the responsible beverage service training that's provided at all the businesses in our community mm -hmm. so that we don't sell or serve to minors or right. over serve so that people aren't driving impaired. Um, so those are just a few of the, the different things. In the first five years, through a result of all of our different programs, we were able to reduce underage drinking by 5% and mm -hmm. we're able to reduce uh, marijuana use and tobacco use as well. 
Excellent, excellent. I know a big part of, of what goes on with that is the youth crew. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the youth crew. Well, actually, the youth crew is in the midst of a new chapter, so okay. to speak. Um, some of our youth crew alumni decided it was time for a change, and we developed a new project, which is going to be creating school clubs across the community. Uh -huh. So every public school in our community will have an ARCASA chapter. Oh, excellent. And that will be uh, kind of spearheaded through each school. There'll mm -hmm. be an adult advisor through the school, and a high school student will be paired with each club mm -hmm. uh, representing the youth sure, crew sure. and they'll be mentoring them to develop their own club and then as a community we'll be working together with this broader youth crew project okay. so from elementary all the way up to high school yeah. so we're, we're super excited about that it'll be a way for younger kids to get involved and for the older kids to have a chance to do some mentoring sure sure so what kind of activities would a an arcasa club in an elementary school do sure well a lot of what the elementary clubs will probably focus on is asset building so mm -hmm. um, if they're in grades four and five they might not be yet ready to talk about some of the tougher stuff sure so they would focus on you know what are the youth development strategies that they feel strengthen their school okay. um, ways to talk to parents about some of these tough issues mm -hmm. as they get older how to create um, conversations with principals and leaders around okay how to make your school stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so they get to develop their project based on what their needs are. Okay. And how about in the middle and high school levels? Middle and high school, they probably will push the boundaries a little bit more, focus sure. more on the specifics of substance abuse. I know at the high school, they're going to be looking at opioid abuse in particular. Um, not just because it could impact high school students, but there has been an impact across our community on that particular issue. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking at medication safety, okay. um, particularly um, any young person could be vulnerable in the sense that they could be prescribed a medication. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that young people understand that there's vulnerability to addiction if they misuse that medication or yeah. if they borrow a medication that's not meant for them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that they'll be looking at as medication safety. Our middle school clubs will be looking at underage drinking and marijuana prevention. Those are two real key areas mm -hmm. we want to make sure we get to at the middle school level. And uh, one of the things that you've uh, done also is you've presented to uh, the, the school board at least and, and other about the uh, the uh, surveys that have been done. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Every two years the school district administers their youth, youth risk behavior survey right. and that's a, a process that all most schools in the United States um, undertake. It's through the Centers for Disease Control. Um, I'm the survey administrator for our local survey and okay. we just administered it back in the winter of 2015. Okay. So we have data coming out we hope this fall. Right. Um, and the d it just goes into all the different risk behaviors that young people can self-report on. Mm -hmm. It is anonymous so they can feel comfortable in, in sharing the truth about right. what's going on. It gives us a really good snapshot of what young people are struggling with as well as some of the pr protective factors that okay. are working for them. So for example, we know if they have a connection with an adult that they trust. We'll know if they've accessed any services. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also know if they're abusing a substance or right. perhaps are feeling depressed. Okay. And we get from that statistics yes. uh, about uh, Lots what's going of statistics. on here. <laughs> and yeah. those, you then go through the process of interpreting those for yes. the various people who can do something about it. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a working document, so the results come out and then we hit the ground running with trying to get it to all the different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And each of the youth clubs will also get access to the data, so they'll be looking at their specific area. So the fourth and fifth graders will be, be looking at the grade six data, so they yeah. can see, okay, what's happening when we get up to middle school, okay. and so on. Uh, excellent. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm one that believes that data is important. And, Absolutely. And you can't make a change without knowing what you're changing from or want to change to or what have you. So I mm -hmm. think it's important to kind of continue that process and know what's happening so that we can address it appropriately and, right. and effectively. Uh, I know you have some events coming up yes. uh, in the next several weeks. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? There's one coming up on September 30th. Sure. Um, our, our big event is our ninth annual ARCASA annual meeting. Okay. And that's going to be um, featuring a special film. Um, it was developed by the Mark Wahlberg Foundation. It's called mm -hmm. If Only. It focuses on two young men who are struggling with prescription drug abuse. And it follows them through their journey and the decisions that they make. It was created by James Wahlberg, um, mm -hmm. who is a brother of the Wahlberg family. Yeah. Um, and he is in recovery himself. And so okay. he wanted to create a story that focused on some of the issues he saw younger people in recovery struggling with and mm -hmm. other folks that have not made it to recovery. Sure. Um, it's a really compelling film. After the film, um, we will be looking at sharing information from local treatment professionals and okay. give the audience a chance to ask questions mm -hmm. and so on. And it'll be at Jordan's IMAX. Um, oh, they've okay. donated the use of the IMAX, oh, which good. is an amazing venue. So we're very excited about that. So it's September 30th um, from 7 to 9 p.m. And there's no cost to that? No cost to that. We just ask that people call our CASA ahead to reserve a seat okay. so we can make sure we have enough space. Sure, and that would be open for parents or parents, anyone who has yep. any kind of interest at all. And um, we recommend for the film um, ages 12 and up. Okay. 
All right, very good. So you have a film coming up yep. uh, on the September 30th. You also, also have uh, some kind of uh, activity in October as well. Yes, um, we have Dr. Kevin Hill coming from McLean's. Okay. He um, has written a book um, about marijuana, the, all of the different issues. He's collected all of the research in one, pe in one book, which okay. is fabulous. And it looks at um, the issues around medical marijuana, the uh -huh. issues around whether it should be legalized or not, okay. and then also some of the medical research that we have and the medical research that we don't yet have. What are some of the medical okay. questions we need to be asking? So it's a really fascinating read, but he's going to be coming and presenting some of the information from his book, and it'll give our community a chance to really grapple with some of these issues, ask questions, and be able to learn from an expert in the field. Great. And when is that happening? That'll be October um, 29th from okay. 7 to 9 p.m. at the High School Performing Arts Center. Okay, so 7 to 9 p.m., October 29th. So if they can't make the film in September, Come on to the they next can one. hear <laughs> Kevin Hill in October. That's excellent. Yeah. Just as we're wrapping up, I know there's some ongoing projects sure. that are happening. We've got about a minute or two left. Just okay. quickly describe those for us. The other ongoing project is our Youth Mental Health First Aid Program. Okay. We're offering certification for any adult that is connected to a young person, whether it's a parent or a youth worker or a clergy person, if they would like to get certified in Youth Mental Health First Aid. It's okay. an eight-hour training that we offer free of charge through one of our federal grants. All right. And then we also have an Active Parenting of Teens program. It's an online program that parents can sign up for mm -hmm. to access free of charge. They do one lesson a week for eight weeks, and it focuses on parent-child communication, especially in the teen years. And to find out about any of these activities, they, they can, can call our CASA, 781-942-6793. Um, All right. Well, thank you very much, Erica. There's so lots of stuff going on, and that's good, actually. It's yes, good that there are lots of busy. things <laughs> going on uh, because we certainly want to uh, see the reduction of mm -hmm. substance abuse, ultimately the elimination of substance Absolutely. abuse, really, uh, in our community and the communities around us. So thank you, Erica, for being here today and sharing a little bit of what's going on with the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. And I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll be back in just a moment here on RCTV. Next on Community Conversation, we have John Fudo from Town Hall. Well, hello and welcome back here on Community Conversation. I'm sitting here with John Fudo, who is the new Community Services Director for the Town of Reading. You used to be the Recreation Department Director, and now you're in a new role. Yes, we made the shift after about 12 years as the Recreation Director. Uh, this past winter, they asked me to take on some ex uh, extra uh, responsibilities including Elder Human Services, Veteran Services, to help the department along with recreation. Oh, wow. So they really kind of expanded your job quite a bit there. <laughs> they did a little bit, yes. So you have a lot of things going on. What? <laughs> we were doing fine. Do you want me to come back and bring your head, or do you want to take my head? Uh, no, it's okay. I, I generally have them on my head, oh, okay. So it unless it's okay. creating a sun. Uh, okay. I go to Board of Selectmen meetings all the time with them on my head, so <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> where they are. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, I was ready. Before. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right, starting at five. Roll time What's that? We just have to roll timers. Okay, so he's rolling time now. Rolling timers. Starting at five, four, three, two. Well, hello and welcome back to Community Conversation. I'm joined here with by John Fudo, who is the new Community Services Director that's here correct. in town. You used to be the Recreation Director. Yes, that's correct. For and for about the last 12 years, uh, this past winter they introduced a new role for me, which would be the Community Services Director, which entailed Elder Human Services, the Health Department, uh, as well as the Veteran Services Department to go along with the recreation. Wow, so there's lots of new responsibilities there <laughs> yes, happening. Sir. And going along with lots of new responsibilities are lots of 
things going on around town. I know you're involved in an elder services uh, survey right now. Yeah, we've actually just launched a uh, community survey for uh, folks to look at. Uh, it's available online uh, on the town website. If you travel okay. there, you can find information uh, to get the link off of SurveyMonkey. Uh, the survey surrounds just a, a wants and needs assessment of the community and looking okay. forward um, for basically the 45 to 60 um, range and plus. Okay. Okay, and what kinds of things are you looking to, to, to find out from people? Uh, just the whole gamut. We're interested to hear about housing. We're interested to hear about um, programming that they might be looking for, transportation, mm -hmm. um, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, maybe things that we don't know about. We're thinking okay. about people that are 45 now that are going to be 60 in 15 years. Right. Could look a whole lot different than it does now. Sure, sure. And so, what do you? What is your intention to? What do you plan to do with the information that you get? Uh, we're actually going to take that back, and it's going to help us develop the Elder Services Master Plan, in which will be worked on throughout the winter, um, and hopefully re we'll have some help with the MAPC, uh, which will come out and actually steer us and guide us um, to some conclusions of where we want to be. Okay. And then we sort of set a roadmap for staffing and programming as the sure. next three to five years transpire, and that hopefully mm -hmm. bring us into the next. Uh, phase of that project. Sure. Now, you're working with a, a group or committee in town to, to do that, or uh, currently it's just staff. Uh, okay. It's being currently led by our our elder human services um, administrator, Jane Burns. Okay. Um, but it will eventually branch out into the council on aging. Okay. And others will be involved. Board so of selectmen. And that it'll kind be of a thing. truly a community effort to build this plan. All right. Well, it'll be interesting to see what comes about of that. And yeah, know, we're actually we're real myself. Interested. I'm in that age group, <laughs> so I suppose I should be getting. We're real and interested. And yeah, figuring out what's happening there. What's funny is you don't think about, you know, the current 60 plus crowd. Yep. Not a lot of people are tech savvy, and sure. the crowd coming through over the next 15 years will be very tech savvy. Sure. They'll be able to manipulate cell phones and, right. and iPads and what have you. So, right. um, just getting prepped for that. So they can go to the town website and and click on the link there, and they'll find. Yeah, right on the main page. If right you travel to. Uh, the the town it's reading uh, it's ci dot reading dot ci dot us right so, yeah. right it's right on <laughs> the on the si I think it's in the sidebar you okay click on it and take you where you need to be excellent well another program you've been involved with is the Saturday Night Lights what, yeah. what is that exactly yeah that's from my uh, <laughs> humble beginnings of, with the recreation division yeah sure. we've uh, we just kicked that off this past weekend um, we've got about 650 kids participating wow. uh, down the fields each week it's been really great. Um, we have age, the age gamut is uh, kindergarten all the way through middle school. Okay. Um, it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, the gentlemen that run the program for us, um, Jim Murphy and Carl McFadden, a lot of people know uh -huh. them. Uh, they do a superb job. They pay attention to detail. They're, sure. they're, very, uh, um, they're very much into making sure that kids that want to play ball get a chance to play mm -hmm. ball. So what types of activities are, 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 are they doing? Uh, it, for flag, it's it's basically all flag football. So okay. Saturday Night Lights is flag football. Okay. Uh, the kids come down each week. They practice for about 15 to 20 minutes, and they jump right into a game. Okay. Um, and it it's not just the flag football that they're playing. It's relationship building. It's meeting friends. It's sure. It's it's become quite a family event. There's hundreds of people that uh, come down there each week, and some people plop chairs down for a couple of hours and just uh -huh. hang out. So it's. It's turned into a Saturday night kind of family festival. Sure, and it sounds like the kind of thing where you know, people are concerned about the way that kids don't exercise or run around as much as they used to when we were kids, and so it sounds like kind of a, an opportunity to have that happen. Th th that is exactly true, and the other thing is you know, getting them away from the negative act activities and into the, sure. into the more positive, and that applies to more of the older crowd, but mm -hmm. um, certainly it's a great habit to to start forming with the younger kids. Sure, and where is that happening? Uh, that happens every Saturday at the high school field house um, okay. on the adjacent field, so the okay. stadium field, and the, the and turf the field behind it, and yeah. all the grass fields. We actually okay. wow. roll out sometimes up to 26 teams at one time playing. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Sounds like a huge yep. undertaking. It, it, it certainly is. But you got a good team put together yes. working on that. And yes. So that's happening every Saturday night through the fall? Every Saturday night all the way through the end of October. Uh, through the end of October. Yep. Excellent, excellent. So, so even though that's still recreation, uh, you know, it, it, you have branched out into uh, several different things. And I know there's a trick-or-treat party coming up as well. Yeah, d to just go along with the recreation theme, uh, our second annual downtown trick-or-treat will take place on October 28th. It's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, we choose the half day because it just makes sense. Sure. Kids could get out of school, get home, get changed, and they can be down down to be down to the downtown they by 4 o'clock. Even do their homework before they, they go. Might, <laughs> they might even suggest that they do that because they may be tired when they get back. Right. But the event goes from 4 to 5.30. It's actually perfect. Uh -huh. um, many of the businesses participated last year. We're hoping everyone will do that again. 
Uh, we just did our outreach for the local businesses. In fact, RCTD is on the route. Yeah, I seem to remember that we got something give, about that. Yeah. Give up maybe videotapes or something. <laughs> whole videos. Nobody uses um, videotapes anymore. <laughs> that's why you give them away. No one's using them. Okay. Um, but it worked out great last year. We yeah. probably had, I don't know, over a thousand kids attend. Sure. We certainly had more than we, we expected in the first year, and we just expect it to grow. And yeah. there'll be some other cool things that we're not really publicizing quite oh, yet. Oh, okay. Um, but there'll be some cool catches there for sure. So. Um, check us out, you know, right downtown, show up to Town Hall, yeah. um, or anywhere on the route starting at 4 o'clock on the 28th. It's going to be and awesome. And so just so people are clear, it's kind of like trick-or-treating, but downtown, right. as opposed to through a neighborhood or something Right, like and it's, 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 it's a kind of a win-win for all of us. It's a chance for our, our local businesses to establish themselves and show folks that they're there and what they uh -huh. do. Uh -huh. um, you may not have a reason to go in a particular store, but if you're on the downtown trick-or-treat route, everyone's right. going into your store. So it's a chance for vendors and, and uh in some of our storefronts to show off their wares, but it's also an opportunity for kids to sure. kind of get together and go up and go up, go up and down the streets. I think it's awesome. Yeah, so have you worked with the Chamber of Commerce on putting that together? Uh, the Chamber's actually gonna be one of our lead sponsors this year, as okay. a matter of fact. Right. So uh, we're working on getting some things tied up for the bags we're giving away this year. But okay. yeah, they're one of our lead sponsors. I know it was a big success last year, and uh, I, I expect it will be again this year. So that's on uh, Wednesday, October, October 28th. Uh, from 4 to 5.30, 5 pretty much anywhere in downtown. Yeah, if you basically if you come to either the places, the best places to start, either Town Hall uh, by the train station or you can park behind uh, Portland Pie Company Okay. Um, in that back parking lot. Sure. Um, and you should be able to find yourself on a route at some point. Right, right. Well, that sounds excellent. Yeah, it's well, great. I know as, as the town has shifted some of their responsibilities, there are some new staff that have been added um, as well this, this Yeah, I, I would love to talk about that. One of the first things I was charged with when I took on my new role was filling some vacancies. Okay. Uh, we had a vacant nurse position uh, that we just hired mm -hmm. uh, back in April, uh, Ms. Donna Pierce. Um, she's a retired um, nurse from, I believe, Melrose Wakefield Hospital. Okay. So she's joined our staff. She's with us 16 hours a week. Um, it was a big loss when we, when we lost a person in that position. So having that person back in the building right. half the week is is tremendous. It's a great yeah. opportunity for us. Excellent. Well, it's good. I know that's a very important role to have filled. You know, yeah, for people who, who it need. is. And uh, we, we, quite honestly, we were looking for someone to come in and kind of get our flu clinics back up and running. Mm -hmm. You know, just some uh, answer simple questions to look at. Sure. You know, simple issues that we were having. So, yeah. you know, it's great to have Donna on board. Um, we recently also hired. Um, our new veteran service agent, Kevin Bullmiller. Okay. And if you were around downtown this morning, you saw the beautiful production they put on. Yeah, it was really excellent, actually. With the returning veteran from uh, the Korean War, which was, was phenomenal. So mm -hmm. that just goes to show you Kevin's skills. Sure. Uh, we're hoping Kevin will be with us for a long time. He's, uh, he's another, I believe he was a former Marine. Okay. Um, and he's joined us in... Uh, I think what you'll get out of Kevin is um, now that he's full time. I think you'll see a lot more outreach for the veteran community, okay. and I think you'll see more things veteran-wise come up uh, come up over the next few years. For oh, sure. that's that's good so to hear. So yeah, we're excited to have Kevin. Especially on with uh, you know the wars that have gone on over the last decade or so, there are more and more veterans around. We sometimes we forget that the, all the veterans aren't 80 and 90 years old, but right. we actually have veterans that are in their 20s. Right, we do. Um, and so there's a wide gamut of those who may be needing some kind of services from the we town. We do, and, and sometimes the outreach is the important part and knowing mm -hmm. how to how to reach these folks, and, and Kevin's certainly up to the task. And he's just so interested in, he in helping people. That's what attracted us to him to, to bring yeah. him on board, but I think he's going to be a great fit for the town. Excellent, excellent. And our, our final hire was as recent last week. We uh, just hired a new health agent. Uh, his name is Stephen Delorio. Okay. Um, and Steve comes up, comes to us from Framingham, mm -hmm. the health department in Framingham, um, with a lot of energy. He's a fresh face for the town. Um, and he'll jump right on board with some of the health issues and uh -huh. help people through some processes for permitting and okay. and uh, flu permits and yeah. you know the whole gamut with with the whole health industry. Sure. You know, the, the main thing there is to find someone that's willing to enforce the code and right. and uh, willing to you know, do the right thing. Sure. Now, so. is, is he involved with the inspections of properties and restaurants? And that he sure can be. Well? Yeah. yeah, that that's more of our inspecting uh, our inspection services yeah. uh, area, but uh, he could certainly jump right in on that. Yeah. So. so lots of different things going on at, at Town Hall, and you, yeah, you seem to have fit into this new role uh, pretty well. Just as we close up, I know uh, even it's just one of the departments that you oversee, uh, but uh, any kind of successes from the any of the departments this summer or from the past six months that you might want to just kind of let people know about summer camp or wh what have you yeah actually I'm glad you mentioned summer camp we actually 
for the first time ever, we sold out every single week of summer camp. Wow. We had seven wow. weeks of summer camp with 120 kids in each week. Wow, that's excellent. Which is just an unbelievable number for us. Yeah. Uh, it's a tribute to our staff. Sure. It's a tribute to our uh, in-house staff and our and our paraprofessional staff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that work directly with the camp. Um, but it also shows that people in Reading want their kids to be around kids in Reading, and I think. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes talk because I grew up here and I talk about growing up Reading and mm -hmm. part of the rite of passage is going to summer camp at least <laughs> once. Everyone should try summer camp at least once. Right. And right. We, we're lucky enough that a lot of people do it more than once and they do right. it, you know, several times over the summer sure. in repeat years. So sure. it was great success. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. Anything else you want to highlight as we close up here? Uh, no. Anything I, that, you know, you have a book here. I did. I actually brought the uh, newest version of um, Reading Recreation Magazine um, that just hit mailboxes. Uh, about a week ago, so okay. keep your eyes peeled for that. It's also available online. And there's all sorts of programs for all ages in yeah, there that people yeah, can check out. One of our successes is pickleball with uh, <laughs> with, with recreation. It's right. it's taken on a life of its own and <laughs> it's become a very uh, very popular program very quickly. Right. So. Right. Well, thank you for stopping by and sharing yeah. out what's going on with all the different departments that you oversee. And hopefully thank we'll be you, able to Kevin. stop by again and uh, maybe later on in the year and share with us again. Sure. That Thanks would be for great. being here, John. Thanks, Kevin. We. Uh, Need to move on now, so we are moving on. You've been watching Community Conversation on RCTV. Well, thank you for joining us here today on Community Conversation. Thank you to Erica and to John for joining us on this episode. Be sure to tune in next time.